Welcome back to the last video in the series about the apps I use to run my life. First I tackled my journaling that I do in Logsec, then I tackled my daily humdrum tasks that I do in Todoist, and now we're here in my beautiful broken brain in Obsidian. So far it might not look that impressive. I started using Obsidian in October last year. <sighs> you see, I used to be real smart. I have several degrees. I used to read research papers for fun. And my brain, it worked. But then I became a mom. To twins. They are the best thing I've ever done. But I never really got out of the brain fog of, of pregnancy and the fun, colicky infant time. I know some people get out of that stuff quickly, but my brain just didn't catch up. One day in October, I said to myself, it's time, you know, to try and reclaim my brain. And I downloaded Obsidian, cracked the spine of Atomic Habits, and I got to work. It's now gone almost six months, and I'm not really bringing my cognitive A-game, but I feel like I can think again. And... A lot of that is honestly thanks to Obsidian. I can have a small ID, write a note, and then a few days later I think about something that links to that note, and then the connections grow and my mind expands. In the beginning I wanted to read, mostly to fill up my notes, and I'm not even ashamed to say that because it gave me so much. It became a positive spiral. I started reading more and more and more and thinking more and more and more. I make less notes when I read now, but my notes are better. They're more of my own thinking, but without those first few months of filling up my vault with quote-unquote bad notes, I would never have gotten into a positive reading and thinking spiral and habit. So let's dive in. Let's go through my vault and see how I use Obsidian. Okay, so let's get down to it. No more mushiness. Here is my home note, so to speak. And this is just for my MOCs. And uh, I'm not I'm not using it that much. It's honestly mostly for video intros. Most of my notes start off in my inbox. My inbox is for every book I've re started reading. Uh, articles I've read and annotated in Sotero and for various and sundry I add with the read it later plugin and via Omnivore which is another read it later uh, service that I use. Books stay in the inbox until I've processed every note and quote that I've put in the book note. My process for taking notes when I'm reading, um, I think it would make most note makers want to scratch their eyes out. Sorry. So this is my uh, deep work note. I've been reading this for quite a long time. I'm reading it in small chunks when I'm at my computer. So here I mostly just put the quotes that made me go, uh-huh, mm-hmm. Rarely I also uh, add some of my own thoughts uh, straight away. Uh, that's not my usual process. But sometimes I, ha I, I see the quote and I immediately think, oh, uh, I, I'm thinking about this when I, when I choose this quote. But then when I'm done with the book, I go back into my note and process all of this. Um, by that I mean I, I go through it and uh, if they make me go, ah yes, instead of just uh -huh, I write down my own thoughts and I put them in their own note with a link back to the book. I also hear leave, I have, I've, 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 I've started, as you say in Swedish, I've, I've taken a full start. I have some of them here, so I... Um, when I'm done with the entire note, it's just gonna be um, links like this. Honestly, sometimes when I go back through all these, because as you see, it's a lot. And sometimes when I go through them, I think, mm, I don't just know. 
I don't need this. So I just, I just delete it. But when everything is said and done, when the book is done and I've processed all the quotes, I've either deleted the ones that I don't have an attachment to anymore, or I've put my own words um, to to what I was thinking about when I saw the the quote or a passage or something. I move the book to my reference note. So this is everything that I have, uh, that I've processed or stuff that I think, mm, you know what, I might need this later. Save it just in case. Yes, I am a hoarder. But all my processed notes, they go here. These are mostly just me, my own thoughts. Uh, my own ideas, my own words. Are these atomic evergreen permanent notes? Very much not. When I'm bored, I sometimes press the button right here, the random note button, and I read through a note and I find that I've changed my perspective of everything. And then I, I add stuff to the note or rewrite it. Maybe I should save all my iterations, but man, YOLO. Sometimes I even delete notes, actually. My reference really gets deleted. My notes, they are not that safe. As I said, uh, the, the reference material goes here. Not all of these books have notes or links in them, but I save them anyway because I thought that maybe, maybe I don't want to ha maybe I didn't find any interesting thoughts in that book or maybe that book didn't give me anything that I felt uh, I wanted to write about but maybe I still wanted to reference that book in another note so I thought oh, I'll save them here and uh, and so I have them I should stop doing that though because I have both goodreads and story graphs for reading history so I don't really need the reference folder as just a reading history, but I, you know, man, I just want to hold on to the notes. Anyways, as an aside, please feel free to add me on Goodreads or Storygraph. I have the same username there as I do on YouTube, so it would be fun if you just added me. Just say you're from YouTube and I'll add you back. But as I said, I think the idea is that maybe I didn't get any deeper thoughts from the book, but I might want to reference it in some other note. So, what's this folder then? Well, this is where I keep all my daily notes. Well, not all. Uh, as I said, I sometimes cull notes and daily notes are particularly prone to this. Uh, if the random note shows me a day that really shouldn't, shouldn't be in Obsidian, but rather in Logsec, I just shop it. I delete it. As I said in my Logsec video, I did try journaling in Obsidian, but I didn't like it. So some of these notes are still hanging around, but not to worry. I'll find them and uh, I'll deal with them. I use uh, the periodic note plugins instead of using the core daily note plugin. I like to do weekly and monthly notes to try and force myself to keep track of my place in space and time. So what I'll do is I'll basically summarize my daily notes, but also add some dashes of what's been happening in my log sec and my to-doist areas, so to speak. But here are all my notes and these with, that's my weekly note then. And I don't seem to have, oh here. So this is a monthly note and this is a weekly note and these are just daily notes. For my daily notes, I have templates. I can show you them because I don't want to show my daily notes. So here I have actually saved some iterations. Um, it's a fun way to see what I thought I needed uh, during certain periods and maybe what YouTubers I've been watching to see how their daily notes looks. Anyways, my first iteration here is really my second because the first 
wasn't even a template, I just had a blank note. But this one is, as you see, a lot of things, a lot of frou-frou. Um, this is, I had call-outs for fancy headings, and I had links, and I have, you know, all sorts of exciting different things. And I had a button to move my daily notes to the dailies folder when I was done with the day, so it was all very fancy. For my second iteration, I toned it down a lot, as you see. This is just a templater um, code, I don't know, and that will just show off the uh, name of the day and uh, what date it is. So this was very minimalistic. For my third one and the one I use currently, I added two daily tasks that are Obsidian related. And that's just to make sure that I don't have any obsidian things hanging around in other places, like my paper inbox, which is just a fancy word for a notebook, a paper notebook. And also sometimes I add quick things in to is during the day that should be either things that should be in obsidian or things I want to do to obsidian. My weekly template, I feel, is it's a bit vague right now, but I haven't gotten around to thinking about how to sort of measure my week better. Um, if you have any suggestions, I would actually honestly really love to have suggestions on how to make this one better, because what went well? I mean, yeah, with what exactly? In what area did I do well? I mean, I mm, no, I don't really like this, but I haven't gotten anything better yet. My monthly check-in is a bit more decked out and also a bit less vague. And I like this a lot more than my weekly check-in. This is more like, what have I done? Yeah, I can, I can, I can work with that. I can go through my to is I can go through my, uh, my, my daily notes and see like what have actually been done this month. So this, I like this. So that's it for the dailies and uh, what's going on in this folder. As a last chapter in this uh, walkthrough of Obsidian, I thought I would talk a bit about plugins I use. I have a few different plugins and I did do a video on my five favorites. Um, and you can find a link to that video in the top right corner of this video. So instead of boring you with going through those five again, I'll just show you my newest favorite, which is the book search plugin. I try to read as much as I can right now, and I enjoy having metadata to the books. So this plugin is the answer to my needs. As you can see uh, here, let's see. Oh, that's my quick ad. That's here. So as you can see, you can manage how you like your notes to be titled. Right now, I prefer to name them with the book's own title. No, no years, no authors. Um, this is for now. As those who have seen a few of my videos, I change a lot. So if I do a video again on book search in a few months, this will probably look different. But this is how I uh, title my uh, book notes right now. A little book emoji so I can easily see in the list if it's a book or not. Uh, you, ha you can add your template here if you have something else you want to add. And you can choose where you want your notes to be placed. I don't know why it's in notes because it's supposed to be... Um, the inbox. So, and you can add a service provider. It's just uh, Google for global and neighbor for Korean. Uh, I don't have any front matter settings. Um, I just use the default and I also don't have any special uh, content settings. I just use what uh, book search thinks I need and so far it's been working. I actually just started reading Piranesi and I haven't added it yet, so that's perfect. Let's search for it. 
Control Alt B. And just a side note from my past. Piranesi is really hard to find in search book. Um, so I'm gonna search Piranesi and Clark, which is the surname of the author. Because when I uh, recorded this, I couldn't for the life of me find this book with just Piranesi. So search book is not perfect because there's so many books. So sometimes you have to add a bit of more um, information. If you have the ISBN number, that's the that's a sure way to search. But uh, let's see. This is then the title and the surname of the author. And there we have it. Susanna Clark, Piranesi. And we'll press it. And here we go. It is in my inbox here and it has all this metadata. Um, as you could see in the settings, you can you can change this and you can have a different uh, template. So there's a lot of choices on how you want your notes to look, but this is what I need. Another new uh, add-on to my plugin list is um, the footnote shortcuts, I guess you could say, because as I understand it, you can make footnotes in Obsidian, but with the uh, hotkey, it's just uh, so much easier. I've slowly started to write a bit more in depth uh, with uh, more sources, and I like showing my sources, so the footnote plugin is making that easier. So the hotkey is Control Alt F. So as you can see, it added a footnote here, and then the cursor jumped down to where um, I could add my information. So I could just write, you know, whatever here. And if I want another one, Control Alt F, and we have number two, and we have number two here. So it's easy peasy, just how I like it. This concludes my little series about my three go-to softwares. I hope it could inspire some new modes of thinking for someone. I really enjoy watching how others manage their lives and knowledge. There are so many styles on how to make notes or think or just manage your lives. Either digital or analog or like I do, a mix of the two. And I know I'm not alone in finding enjoyment in these kinds of videos. You're rarely alone in what you like. <laughs> so I thought there might be someone who would enjoy this series. And I hope and there's someone out there that did. Let me know if there's anything in particular you want to know about. Either Obsidian, Todoist, or Logseek. Or, or how I do certain things in, in these three softwares. And maybe I can do some more videos uh, some other time about the software itself more than how it works or uh, how to do specific things. I think there's a big need for tutorials about software, but there's also just a need for inspiration sometimes. Sometimes you just want to see how some someone else does something and not so much how it it's supposed to be done.